Hello and welcome back to the GSMC Chip Shot Football Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. I'm your host, Manny Maradiege, live today on Thursday, September 19th to start officially another week of the NFL regular season. We have week three kicking off tonight between the New England Patriots and the New York Jets. We're going to preview that game in the first segment, but we're also going to be looking at some other storylines around the NFL, why the scoring is down through the first two weeks of 2024. Pretty interesting there based on all the facts that were provided, and we're also going to be predicting some of the other results heading into Sunday later on, plus some more topics down the line as well, so make sure to stick stick to the show to find out what those are. But before we preview tonight's game, I'd like to remind you guys about a new feature we have on these live shows. If you haven't been tuning into the show and if you've got any questions during the show or want to hear anything that you have to say, making any comments or sharing any opinions, we want to hear about it, right? Your input is a big part of what makes this show great and we thrive on your energy and insights, whether it's a quick comment, a thoughtful question, or an opinion, like I said before, that you have to share don't hesitate to drop it in the chat. Now, if you want to make it absolutely sure that your message stands out and gets featured on any of the live shows, there's an easy way to go about that just by using the new Super Chat feature. Just click the dollar sign at the bottom of the chat box to send in your Super Chat. This guarantees that your message gets on the air and it's also a fantastic way to support our channel. We rely on your support to keep bringing you the sports content you love and we appreciate every bit of it. So go ahead and let us know what you're thinking. Hit the super chat button and let's keep this show as interactive and as exciting as possible. And also, you can also use the alternative option, the tip and donations link, gsmcpodcast.net to still tip and donate and leave any comment or question there as well. We appreciate you guys for your amazing support and we're so thankful to have you guys of part of our community. Anytime you guys are able to interact with us and use that new super chat feature down in the chat box. But now with that out of the way, we can start previewing tonight's game, right? A pretty interesting one because it's the first AFC matchup that we have in this new year. Other than the fact that, right, the Dolphins and the Bills played. This is the first AFC East matchup between the Patriots and the Jets. Both of theirs, obviously, their first divisional games. And we're going to be looking at some injury news because there's some pretty big ones on each side. As well as just looking over their performances, the key factors and matchups that are going to play a part in tonight's game. Plus also just giving my predictions before kickoff tonight at 8.15 p.m. Eastern time. Both teams are coming into this game one and one. The first divisional game, like I said, for both of these teams, the first time also that Aaron Rodgers is playing back at MetLife since the night that he tore his Achilles last year. So there's a bit of, you know, a flashback moment, I guess you could say. Obviously, you hope he stays healthy, right? That goes without saying. But um, I'm sure that's going to be pretty um, pretty emotional, I guess you could say, for him, right? Um, being in that stadium and now actually going through a full game. Hopefully, you know, it all goes well for the Jets. But starting on the New York Jets and getting to them first, there were some injury concerns with their two defensive backs, Michael Carter and DJ Reed. They were both dealing with a knee injury. That was DJ Reed and an ankle injury for Michael Carter. Those were the two injuries for them, but they weren't giving an energy or an energy designation, excuse me. They weren't given an energy uh, designation um, in the injury report. So uh, they're good to go. They should be good because of no injury designation on any of those guys. But also CJ Mosley through the week, through last week's game against the Titans, he is listed as questionable for tonight's game. Last time I checked with a toe injury and on a short week, he was still questionable, obviously, to play. I haven't seen any uh, any updates or anything like that on his availability tonight. I haven't checked since this morning or I haven't gotten anything as of yet. But looking at it for right now, CJ Mosley obviously going to be a big miss if he's unable to play. He didn't participate in practice 
la yesterday also. So we'll see as we get closer to game time what his status is. Jermaine Johnson also is the bigger one than C.J. Mosley, their pass rusher. He is out for the entire season after last week suffering a torn Achilles and having no Hassan Reddick also still in the building. He's probably not going to play tonight, obviously, still holding out. That leaves a big hole for the pass rush for the Jets, right? Because Jermaine Johnson was expected to take a bigger step now. Will McDonald's looking good, but he's also in his second year. So not having Johnson, not having Hassan Reddick. I'll be interested to see how that pass rush pass rush looks tonight and how, you know, how major it is with how the Jets perform in this game. But it goes without saying that they had a good result last week right against the Titans to win on the road and show some growth, I think, from week one because week one didn't go at all how it was supposed to right in their eyes. Losing to the 49ers, the offense kind of died out. The defense, you know, really just non-existent. So to go into Tennessee, show a bit more on the offensive side of the ball with Brees, you know, getting him involved a bit more, scoring another touchdown. That was big, but still... It's it's a work in progress, though. So they're nowhere near finished. Aaron Rodgers looked a little bit better, but um, hopefully in this game, it all culminates right with their first game at home um, in just a few hours. So that is that on the New York Jets. On the Patriots side of things, you know, their big injury worry would be their center, David Andrews. He is being listed as questionable with a hip injury. And also, just like C.J. Mosley, there is no update on him this morning I saw that he was questionable and just checking right now he is still listed as questionable no updates on the starting center for the New England Patriots he just or the Patriots just had a tough loss at home against the Seattle Seahawks where they didn't play too bad on offense they just gave up uh big performances to DK Metcalf uh Jackson Smith and Jigba both of those guys had great games and they just managed to edge it out 23-20 23-20 to 20 over the New England Patriots in Week 2. But it's not like a performance that I was um, disappointed in them or any way, shape, or form. You know, against the Bengals, they played over their expectations. And now, with what I saw in Week 1, I was pretty satisfied with what I saw from them in Week 2. Their defense is better than... Um, than that, you know, than what they produced in week two. I feel like they could play better, you know, and limit the other team's stars a bit more with Christian Gonzalez playing great, Kyle Duggar and Jabril Peppers and all those guys. Um, I think they have more capabilities in them, so I'm hoping to see them kind of rebound tonight and try to shut down Garrett Wilson, Mike Williams, and uh, Brees Hall as well. But, um, you know, stopping Brees Hall, like I mentioned, is going to be the biggest part of that. But we're going to get to that in a few moments. The eye for me to keep an eye on in this in tonight's game will be the running backs for New England. Because last week, it was a decent performance by, um, by Ramondre Stevenson and also uh, Antonio Gibson. But um, they also, in the game against the Titans, if you look at the Jets and their running backs, um, and their running back situation kind of defending the run, Tony Pollard, you know, had a decent game against them, but New England is going to be better with Stevenson, with Antonio Gibson, right? They're a lot more prominent in the run game. So with how Tony Pollard performed and now having an increase there at the running back position, it is something I'm looking forward to to see how the Jets try to stop this running attack as opposed to Tennessee's last week because I think... The Patriots, that's that's their identity, right? That's what they want to do, and they're going to be relentless with it. It's not like it's a first quarter or just first half sort of thing. They're going to go run the ball probably the majority of the game based, based on how everything plays out, so that'll be something I'll be watching out for. But in terms of the matchups that I'm interested in seeing... The first one being Christian Gonzalez against Garrett Wilson. In the past, Christian Gonzalez has played better, or in their one matchup, I guess I should say. he I don't think he allowed that many catches. He played pretty well. I don't have the stats in front of me, but um, the last time they did match up, you know, Garrett Wilson struggled a little bit more. Obviously, he didn't have Aaron Rodgers, but Gonzalez, last time they did play, had a good day against Garrett Wilson, so I'll be interested to see how much Aaron Rodgers goes to him and how much the Patriots sort of leave him one-on-one -on -one with Gonzalez because they trust him or they double him right away to force Aaron to go somewhere else. That's one matchup, right? Then we have, like I mentioned before, with David Andrews. If he plays or not, that matchup between 
David Andrews, the center or the replacement center, be, and also Quinn and Williams going up against Quinn and Williams. How and who is going to win that matchup will be huge because of the run game, because of the, of the pressure on Jacoby Brissett. That's all going to be huge for this game. Quinnen, the most prominent you know defensive lineman they still have left, that's actually participating for them. How much can he affect the game as well? And lastly, a name that you guys might not know if you don't watch the Patriots too much is Keon White, their defensive end. He has four sacks on the year already going up against that Jets offensive line that allowed a couple sacks to Harold Landry last week. So how successful will Keon White be trying to get to Aaron Rodgers? That'll be a big matchup in determining this game as well. And just some of the factors, some of the you know, developing things that will happen in tonight's game. Can Quinnen Williams, off of the point I just made, can he dominate and contribute to stopping the run and how successful will he be in that regard? Also, the New York Jets, they have to generate some sort of pass rush also, alluding back to the first point I made, right, with Jermaine Johnson being out, no Hassan Reddick. How much pass rush can they get to Jacoby Brissett and how uncomfortable can they make him in this game because, you know, their pass catchers aren't necessarily household names. So if Jacoby, you know, is just sitting back there with all the time in the world, those guys could look like, you know, Pro Bowl type guys if the quarterback just has a bunch of time to throw it to them. So that'll be huge as well as still, likewise for the Jets, who else is going to step up outside of Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall to kind of help out this offense and help out Aaron Rodgers? That'll all be things I'm looking at in tonight's game. But in terms of my predictions, I think there will be some struggle from the New York, New York Jets because of how good the New England defense is. But still, I feel like I'm going to have some confidence in Brees Hall and Mike Williams potentially tonight to play a little bit more and show up for the New York, New York Jets. You know, it's, it's their home debut. You have... A lot of anticipation with Rodgers and, you know, your first home game, obviously. I feel like they're going to be playing at a different level. We're going to see the biggest jump that we have seen from them in tonight's game as well. So I'm going to take the Jets in this one by a close margin. There are definitely going to be some moments, but I think Aaron and the Jets offense will come through in the end and deliver and go to 2-1 and one after tonight's game. That's what I think. We'll see how it all plays out. I am anticipating a relatively low scoring game but the Jets will win this one let me know what you guys think on top of that as well in the live chat if you agree with me or maybe you're thinking it's an upset tonight maybe the Patriots steal yet another game that they're not necessarily expected to win so we'll leave that segment there anticipating the start of that game in about an hour and a half or so but now we can move on to the next segment a narrative going around the NFL through the first two weeks. The scoring from everybody league-wide has been down compared to other years. Why that is, why there's not this exciting brand of football down the field throws as much, and how we can address that, and is it necessarily a bad thing? I'll answer all those questions when we return after our first break. 